Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. You're watching our coverage of the FIFA World Cup. I'm your host Frank Rausen Pereira. Big day today. Today is when the tournament really begins because uh, oh, 16 teams of course have made it to the next round. The first match of the round of 16 will be played in a short while from now. Exciting times ahead. Ahead of course we'll preview both the matches that are to take place uh, today and uh, we'll also talk about what could possibly happen in both these matches. We're joining me in the studio uh, as always of course uh, Ilan Chandata, of course, uh, senior sports journalist and uh, Jyoti and Bharat, a former Indian national player. In our first match, France will take on Argentina in the first round of 16 match today. France topped Group C with a clean slate of uh, two wins and a draw, while Argentina wriggled out of the group of death after defeating Nigeria in their last match. Their first win in this World Cup. The two-time world champions will look to stretch their victory march when they meet a very balanced looking French outfit at the Kazan Arena. Argentina will face France with a better head-to-head -head record but will be aware of its form which was just enough to sail them through the group of death. France on the other hand looks a balanced side but may have its forward line tested before the well-built Argentinians. France will also be looking to limit Lionel Messi, the star possibly playing his last World Cup and showed the glimpse of his best in a clinical strike against Nigeria in a must-win game. Deschamps and its defence line must surely have studied the footage of Argentina's 2-1 win against Nigeria. Messi, c'est Messi. Il y a qu'à regarder ses, ses statistiques. Il a 65 buts en 127 matchs. Ça veut tout dire. Après, l'idéal, évidemment, dans l'absolu, c'est de le neutraliser. Mais on sait très bien que... Uh, il est capable, uh, avec peu de choses, de, faire, de pouvoir faire la, la différence. Donc il faut tenir compte, évidemment, quand joue l'Argentine et quand il y a Messi, uh, il y a plusieurs uh, solutions, au moins pour uh, faire en sorte de limiter son, son influence. Besides Messi, France will also be worried about its bench strength. Fullback Benjamin Mendy has been ruled out due to a muscle injury. Also, striker Antonio Griezmann is under pressure to lift after being off pace in a dull Denmark draw. He has only scored with a penalty in the opening 2-1 win against Australia. But Argentina is well aware of characteristic French play of quick ball recovery and pace, especially driven by Antonio Griezmann and Oliver Giroud. That'll make them a dangerous opponent if some Paulis boy are not able to dominate possession. Mañana en la cancha, jugadores que nos permitan eh, estar todo el tiempo controlando desde el juego. Eh, esa es la, in la inquietud, más allá de las diferencias de un equipo que ya transfiere, como Francia, una característica definida, con defensores muy sólidos, con, con muy buena recuperación y salida muy rápida, que nos puedan generar ahí alguna incomodidad por la velocidad que tienen en, en el tema de las transiciones, la sociedad griezmann Chirú. Que, que, que hacen de que sea un equipo muy, muy peligroso. Así que para mí el partido va a estar dado ahí. Eh, eh, yo sueño mañana con ver una Argentina con mucha pasión, pero por sobre todo con mucho fútbol. Si nosotros no controlamos el fútbol, el juego en sí, que es lo más importante de este deporte, seguramente va a terminar siendo un partido físico que no nos va, no, no va a convenir. Argentina holds a better head-to-head -head record against France, winning six and losing only two, while three games have been drawn in all 11 meetings between the two. And in the World Cup, France has yet to beat Argentina, a statistic they would want to better. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Let's first, of course, go over to our stats zone and see what Tina has for us today. Welcome to the Stat Zone, I'm Tina Jha. Two of the tournament favourites go head-to-head -head at the Kazan Arena today, France and Argentina. This is the first match of the round of 16 at this World Cup. While the South Americans have an upper hand, 
there is good reason for the French to be confident ahead of the encounter, as they have not lost to South American opposition at the FIFA World Cup for 40 years. Talking about the head-to-head -head stats, the two sides have played 11 matches so far. Argentina has won six of these encounters, while France has won two. Three matches have ended in a draw. The last match between the two sides was played in February 2009. Talking about the players to look out for in the match. For Argentina, it is of course Captain Lionel Messi. He has played 127 matches for his country, scoring 65 goals in all. But he has another interesting statistic. Lionel Messi has never scored in the knockout stage of a World Cup. France will be looking at Paul Pogba who is in form to trouble a so far clumsy Argentine midfield. After sealing their spot in the round of 16, France had benched Pogba against Denmark, but the Pogba left side failed to impress and ended in a goal-less draw against a lower-ranked Denmark. Over to you, Frank. Thank you, Athena. And now let's take a look at the lineup. Of course, as far as these two teams are concerned, possible lineups, there could be some changes. Uh, uh, the you know, as far as France is concerned, we'll have. Uh, in fact, we'll look at Argentina's lineup first before we go to France. We'll have Ar Armani in goal, uh, Mercado right back, Otamendi and Marcos Rojo, the central defenders. Uh, Tagliafico will be their left back, Perez, uh, right winger, Mascherano in midfield, Banega in midfield, uh, Di Maria uh, on the left flank, and uh, two forwards, uh, Messi and Aguero. Higuain is uh, expected to be rested as far as this match is concerned. Moving on to the French side now, we'll look at the goalkeeper first. Loris uh, Pavard at right back, Umtiti and Varane will be their central defenders. Hernandez uh, in the left back position, Kante and Pogba defensive midfielders. Uh, right winger will be uh, Mbappe and of course uh, another midfielder uh, Griezmann would be playing in midfield today as well as uh, Matuidi and one out and out forward that is Olivier Giroud. We we'll look at the formation now as far as these two teams are concerned. Argentina first on our screens right now 4-4-2 four, four, kind of a formation of course four at the back uh, four in midfield and two up front a very traditional formation that Argentina will be going into this match. Look at the other team now, France. Uh, France is likely to play a 4-2-3-1 kind of a formation with four at the back, two defensive midfielders, three attacking midfielders and one centre forward. As far as the players to watch out are concerned, let's take a look at uh, uh, one key player that is Lionel Messi on our screens right now. Of course, uh, 127 matches, 65 goals is what Lionel Messi has in fact scored. We'll talk about Lionel Messi. Nilanjan, Lionel Messi uh, hasn't really shown brightly in this tournament thus far. His performance in the knockout stages of the World Cup too haven't been very great. He'll be looking to change all that. He will be, but can he? Obviously, he has the talent. He's restricting him to, the, him to a specific zone. If you look at Lionel Messi of Barcelona, he's given a more of a free low. He operates from around the centre midfield. Today in the World Cup where he's operating, he's restricted to a zone just in and around the penalty box. So whenever he receives the ball, it's 3v1 or 2v1 with Messi. The jungle of legs, what he is doing is either square passing or back passing the ball. Argentina looking at him to score goals, whereas creativity genius, they are not actually banking on him. And had they bank on him, Messi being also the creative genius, be given a more of a free-flowing role, would have been, we may have seen a, it means a kind of a different Messi what we are used to in the World Cup like we do in his club football. You know, uh, Jyoti, is there too much pressure on this man to deliver? I mean, is Argentina Messi and is Messi Argentina really? I think that's what we see it as, but I'm sure in the team that is in the atmosphere. You know, he is a player on the team and I'm sure the others are given equal importance. You know, even um, the other day during the Nigeria match, we saw him leading the team talk, you know, pepping yeah. the boys up at half-time before they went onto the field. I'm sure he's someone that, I mean, they all look up to him, the whole world looks up to him as a player, but on the field, I think they're all equals and he's the first among equals there and they're looking for him to sort of set the tone. But to, to think that he, he would do everything for them today is a bit too much. What do you think he should do differently? Yeah, I think as uh, Nilanjan said, he needs to be more free in his zones. He is more of a creative player and, and right now, as he correctly pointed out, he's playing too much of a striker. Alright, 
He needs to be a creative player. He should be a playmaker is what uh, the panelists here are saying. Let's look at the other player to watch out for. It could possibly be Paul Pogba and he would be left to mark Lionel Messi maybe as far as this match is concerned. Interesting contest on the cards, would you think Nilanjan? Pogba versus Messi? Definitely, uh, definitely. I think it's not Pogba alone. I believe Kante will also be there. His central um, defensive screen of Kante along with Pogba would be marking him. There would be a one man marking for him in the final third. Obviously the zonal marking, it's always a 3v1 not allowing him the space onto the left side. Uh, they have to control Messi and if they are able to do it, they have control Messi, you control Argentina. Because in Messi in Barcelona, when he runs parallelly, he has had the likes of Xavi, Iniesta, Neymar, Suarez running with him parallelly. What they do is, they draw players to their side. When he runs with the ball, he's barely running with the ball in this Argentine squad. He's mainly operating as a striker. And if he runs with the ball, who are running parallelly with him? So if they are able to stop those runs, and if he plays restricts him to the zone, the task of the French midfielders and the defenders would be much, much easier. Very interesting contest, Pogba versus Messi. Indeed, a very interesting contest. Very impressive performance thus far, as far as Kante is concerned. You know, Nilanjan brought up the name of Kante. He's played the role perfectly well. He's probably one of those players who has performed well at the club level and he's taken, brought that performance onto this stage as well. Oh, he's, he's such a hard-working player that he just never stops running, that guy. He's just all over the place. And as we've seen in all the games so far, you know, he's really... The ball hasn't really even got to their defence line because Kante is stopping everything. They've had five shots on their goal in all the group games so far and conceded one that two through a penalty. So, Kante is like a wall there. And him with Paul Pogba is going to be very hard to get through. Indeed, you know, but how long can Kante really keep this up? Because he's running up and down, you know, every match he gives it his all. How long can he keep it up, really? Well, he does it for Chelsea day in and day out. He does it for them every week. And he, you know, I think he's the most underrated player at this World Cup. Because I've seen him at Chelsea, he does the same thing and he's underrated there. And now here at France, you know, everyone keeps looking at Pogba. But Kante is doing a lot of that work. Another player, of course, to watch out for is Mbappe and uh, 19 years of age, has uh, played well thus far. Could he be a key factor in today's match? The X factor, because uh, when you don't have a star in your team, it helps you. It helps you because there's not much pressure on you. Griezmann also would be playing a very, very important role. His creativity You know, talking about there. Griezmann, he really needs to step up, doesn't he? Because he's, the tournament has not gone according to plan for him. The, in fact, the entire creativity of France, we have not quite looked into or the world has not visualized what creativity France are actually capable of. Round of 16, they would be backing themselves up. This is the match where they want to, you asked the question to uh, Jyoti, Jyoti whether he can do it, Kante can do it, how long can he? Another 95 minutes, 90 <laughs> minutes plus those 5 minutes or 97 minutes. There could be minutes. extra time today, so he may you, have to do that know. a little longer than you 95 minutes. But you know, quickly, uh, Nilanjan, score line for you. France versus Argentina. <sighs> Very hard to predict. Sit back, relax, enjoy the match. <laughs> <laughs> Jyoti, no way. a word on Di Maria because uh, he too needs to step up really at this level. Yeah, he's been given a chance in the last game and he didn't really shine. He's given a chance again today. He's someone who needs to give them that supply line. He's someone that he can't be losing the ball uh, on the flanks. And that's something that we saw in the last game. So, True. he's very important for them. Uh, you... Would you like to predict what might happen in today's game? Although it isn't the result I would want, I think France will win 2-1. France, 2-1. Uh, I would also think France will win 2-1 or maybe even 3-1 in today's match. Remains to be seen what will happen, of course. We just have to wait for a few more minutes. On that note, we'll slip into a short break now. On the other side, we'll take a look at the second game of today. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching the FIFA World Cup coverage uh, on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Rasen Pereira. In the second match of the round of 16, Portugal will face Uruguay. This will be the third ever encounter between the two sides and they are first at the World Cup. They haven't faced each other since July 1972 when they drew 1-1 at Rio de Janeiro's Maracana Stadium. European champions Portugal booked their top 16 spot after narrowly finishing second in Group B with a goal difference. 
The match against a team which has Suarez, Cavani and Jose Jimenez will certainly be a test for Ronaldo and company. In the second match today, Portugal will be up against Uruguay at the Fish Stadium in Sochi. The Portuguese will be up against a team that had a 100% record in the group stage. Uruguay's strength is based on the twin pillars of Luis Suarez and Edinson Cavani up front and the Atletico Madrid centre-back pairing of Diego Gordon and Jose Jimenez. Não acredito que, que seja um jogo entre Ronaldo e Suarez, acredito que é um jogo entre Portugal e Uruguai. Duas equipas, mas falando por Portugal, Portugal vai dar tudo para, para poder vencer. E, e esse é o nosso foco, é trabalhar e chegar o melhor preparado para esse, para esse jogo que é tão importante para nós como é para, para o Uruguai. Five times Ballon d'Or winner Cristiano Ronaldo pulled his team through the group stage, scoring a hat-trick in the opening match against Spain and also scoring the fastest goal of this edition of the World Cup when he netted the ball in in the fourth minute against Morocco. But Portugal were left to rue their chances after Ronaldo missed a penalty in the 53rd minute against Iran when the Iranian goalkeeper Ali Reza Bayranwind pulled off a heroic save to deny them a 2-0 lead. Não, sem dúvida que o Uruguai tem, tem excelentes jogadores, já, já foram também duas vezes campeões mundiais, tem uma excelente equipa. Uh, mas nós também temos as nossas armas, como é óbvio. Uh, estamos a preparar esse jogo, vamos, vamos ter tempo durante esta semana para, para o preparar da melhor forma. Uh, mas sem dúvida que, que nós temos as nossas qualidades e acreditamos muito uh, em nós também. Uruguay, on the other hand, won all three of their group games and their tough back line will likely put up a spirited defence against the Portuguese as they are yet to concede a goal at the tournament in Russia. Entre Uruguay e Portugal, I think que la historia la va a marcar el partido del día de mañana, ¿no? que eso va a ser, va a ser eh, fundamental por porque el, las historias de antes son anécdotas que quedarán del, del pasado, que las contarán después, pero el, el, hay que vivir el presente, que es el día de mañana, y, y del cual es un lindo partido, el cual eh, nosotros lo vamos a afrontar de la mejor manera posible y con la tranquilidad que venimos afrontando todos los partidos del Mundial. Uruguay topped their group after performing quite efficiently in the first round. They won their matches against Egypt, Saudi Arabia and then hosts Russia without conceding a goal and they look pretty good to go deep into this tournament. Supriyodhar's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Now let's first go over to our stat zone and see what Tina has in store for us as far as this match is concerned. Welcome back to the stat zone. The second match today will be played between Portugal and Uruguay. Portugal will go into this match with the small advantage of knowing the conditions and the pitch. The match is being played in Sochi and it was here that they played their first game of the competition, a thrilling 3-3 draw with the 2010 champion Spain. Coming back to today's game, the two sides have only clashed twice before, the last time back in July 1972. One of these games was won by Portugal, the other ended in a draw. But there is a little curious statistic, though twisted, that should give Uruguay some comfort. In the last four FIFA World Cups, the teams that reached the semi-final had all won their final group match. Here's a reminder, Uruguay defeated Russia in their last group game, while Portugal could only draw with Iran. So let's see if this helps Uruguay in any way. Talking about the key players of the two teams, for Portugal, it will be Cristiano Ronaldo, 
while Luis Suarez will have the responsibility of holding the fort for Uruguay. The two players, remember, are La Liga rivals. Ronaldo plays for Real Madrid and Suarez plays for Barcelona. But as Suarez said in his pre-match press conference, the rivalry in Spain is different. While this is the World Cup and defending the national team's shirt is very special. So here's wishing both the teams good luck and that's it from me in the Stat Zone. Thank you, Tina, for taking us through uh, those stats there between these two sides. Talking about the sides, let's look at the possible lineup as far as these two teams are concerned. Looking at uh, uh, Portugal first, of course, in goal, we'll have Rui Patricio, right back Cedric, defenders Fonte and Pepe, left back Rafael, right winger Presma, uh, midfielder Moutinho and uh, William, left winger Mario, Andre Silva and Ronaldo will be their forwards for today. Looking at the other team now, Uruguay will have uh, Muslera in goal, Jimenez, uh, Godin and Caceres. Three uh, defenders is what they are playing uh, in this particular match. Five midfielders, Nandes, uh, Betancourt, Torreira, Vecino, uh, Luxalt uh, and two forwards, of course, Suarez and Cavani will make up the playing 11 as far as Uruguay is concerned. You know, uh, interesting stat there that we saw uh, Dilanjan. Uh, Portugal has not let in a goal in this particular tournament. Uruguay. Uruguay, sorry, mm -hmm. I beg your pardon. So, clean sheet as far as uh, they are concerned. Can Ronaldo break that jinx? He can. He has the he has the capability to break it. But going back to that old saying, you know what, uh, when you speak about defence, defenders win you tournament strikers win you matches. And Jimenez and Diego Godin pair very well. The understanding between them is brilliant. And Uruguay are a very balanced side. It would be quite of a task for Portugal to bite into them. Not that they can't because Portugal, once they are into the final third or the attacking third, somewhere down the line they look out for someone like CR7. Where is he? We also have our eyes. Where is CR7? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the guy. Maybe a bit of creativity with Ricardo Karesma has, can play the perfect foil for CR7 today. And as far as uh, you know, the Portuguese are concerned, what should they be wary of today, uh, Choti? Uh, they should be wary of uh, the, the Uruguayan defence, really. Them and, of course, they have a strong defensive midfield, again, uh, as we saw with um, France. So, I feel that defensive midfield paired with a very experienced uh, defence line is very hard to get through. And these are the two teams who haven't been conceding a lot of goals. And that's for this reason. So, Portugal today, you know, their style of Ronaldo dropping and then sort of passing and then making a run. I don't know if he's going to get that much space to drop and then sort of get the ball again. Because they're going to be crowding out the midfield as we saw. Sure, you know, talking about, uh, you know, the formations, the crowding of the midfield. Let's take a look at what the possible formations for both these teams uh, could be like. Looking at Portugal first on our screens, a 4-4-4. Four, four, Two kind of a formation, four at the back, four midfielders and two up front, a very uh, traditional kind of a formation. Looking at the other team now, Uruguay, uh, something that Jyoti was mentioning, three defenders at the back, out and out defenders. And you have uh, five players in midfield are going to crowd up the midfield there so that they stifle Ronaldo. And then you have two forwards. You know, Nilanjan, uh, is this a plan basically that they're going with? to not allow Ronaldo to move uh, in midfield. Very much, very much. Uh, they have said Oscar Tabar is the longest serving coach uh, in international football, 14 years. That's quite a longevity, in fact. He has said you need to work as a team to stop Cristiano. And you know, Portugal, their main strength is their attack. You cannot bank on the Portuguese defence to see them through. So once they stuck that five member or four member, four, four wall out there, unable to break it time after again, time after again, Frustration is bound to creep in. The longer the match goes goalless, the more Uruguay gets into the match. And that's the kind of frustration which they'll be intending to build into the Portuguese ranks. Stuffle out Cristiano Ronaldo, stuffle out Ricardo Carisma, play them out, play them out and then Cavani and Suarez leading the pack. You know, talking about players to watch out for, Cristiano Ronaldo, if you can have him on our screen right now, is definitely the player to watch out for in this particular match. 33 years of age, 153 matches, 85 goals is what he has scored. He has already scored quite a few of them in this particular World Cup. Uh, Jyoti, uh, you know, Luis Suarez versus uh, 
uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is what we are uh, looking at it, but it's, it's not going to be that, is it? It's going to be Cristiano Ronaldo versus the midfield and the defence of Uruguay. Definitely, Ronaldo has a, he has a tough game ahead of him. He has to keep cool. He's a character who they're going to be trying to, uh, you know, they want to trouble him today. They want him to get irritated on the field and they want him to run out of ideas. And um, that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to instigate. So he's going to have to keep cool and not, you know. One way of instigating is that man on our screens. He's Luis the Suarez. biggest instigator. <laughs> you know, probably say something in his ear or maybe even bite it, Anjan. <laughs> you never know. We said it the other day. But, uh, you know, Luis Suarez and Cavani are silent poachers. They are very effective players, but not of the star status of Messi or Ronaldo. They will do their job silently and Cavani and Suarez, even when the interchange and the one-two which they play, can, can see Uruguay through. You know, there's Pepe uh, at the back as far as Pe Portugal are concerned. Absolutely. The pace of Luis Suarez and Cavani is going to trouble the Portuguese defence, isn't it? Absolutely. And in such matches, Pepe has always lost his school. There have been some rough tackles coming up. It would be very dicey in the Uruguayan penalty, in the uh, Portuguese penalty box. If at all, this, where do you think this match is going to be won or lost, Jyoti? In the midfield and the team that has more patience. So I you... feel the more patient team will win. And for me, I think Uruguay is the more patient team. So, if you, would you say that if Portugal scores first, then the match is going to be extremely interesting? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Uruguay going into this game to basically just frustrate them, keep this going for as long as they can and then Suarez comes in and does his thing. And you know, he's always, he's a player, he's been scoring in every game, he's in the right place at the right time, he's one of those players who just has a knack of scoring. So, we can expect him to score somehow, uh, but Ronaldo is someone who's going to get frustrated if he doesn't. So, they're going to play on the break is what Jyoti is suggesting, that's the kind of uh, game that we're going to expect the, the, Uruguay the waiting, to play? The waiting game from Uruguay. They would not be in a hurry at all. That's their strong point. That's what has seen them through. That's what they have built during the means in the group league matches. The longer the match progresses, Uruguay will slowly come out of the shell. They'll not be in a hurry to seize the momentum right from the kickoff. That's never the style of play. On the contrary, Portugal can or Portugal may want to. Would you put your neck on the line and call today's match? No neck on the line, but <laughs> next round, quarter-final, let it be an Argentina-Portugal CR7 versus LM10, the World Cup final before the final. Uh, what do you think the scoreline could be? Let it be an Argentina-Portugal <laughs> quarter-final, okay. that's okay. it. Okay, okay. Nilanjan is not willing to commit on a scoreline uh, today. Jyoti? Uh, I think it's going to be uh, close, either 1-0 or 2-1, one, uh, one goal difference. Who's going to win though? I think uh, Uruguay will win. Okay, Uruguay is going to win is what Jyoti is suggesting. Remains to be seen what happens of course. But all in all, it's going to be an exciting day at the World Cup today. You don't want to miss any of these two matches because I bet they will be nail biters and they will be extremely interesting. With that, it's a wrap on our telecast of the FIFA World Cup. Uh, for today, thank you so much Nilanjan and Jyoti for joining me in our studios and sharing your perspectives with us. That's it for now. See you again same time tomorrow.